Let's take a look at an example of computing an antiderivative using this technique of trigonometric substitution. So let's evaluate the integral of the function, the square root of 9 minus x squared divided by x squared, and find its antiderivative respect to x. Now this square root right here is going to be indicative to us that we should be using that trigonometric substitution. The reason is that you see a square root, but inside the square root, we see this difference of squares, 9 minus x squared. Now we saw previously our ancient codex, uh, there's three types of trigonometric substitutions we should be using. And the first type is actually the type that appears in our situation. Here, if we take uh, a to be three, Notice that a squared is equal to 9, and that's exactly what we have here, the square root of 9 minus x squared. All right, and so our codex is, to is telling us that we should take the substitution x equals 3 sine theta, and we're going to be wanting to use this Pythagorean identity. So let's go back to this situation here. So let me get rid of this uh, squiggle right there. So let's use the substitution that was suggested. We're going to take x is equal to 3 sine theta. Now, as this is going to be a, a substitution, we do also have to deal with the dx. Taking the derivative of x here with respect to theta, we'll get 3 cosine theta d theta. Okay. And so we're going to make some substitutions going into this expression. But before we go any further, it is often useful to consider the following right triangle diagram. So at the reason we're introducing, of course, these trigonometric substitutions in the first place is we're trying to utilize right triangle trigonometry to help us out here. That's what we mean by this Pythagorean identity. Now, some people prefer uh, just to use the algebraic identity we saw on the previous screen. Uh, but honestly here, I like to think of it in terms of this diagram right here. We have this right triangle with respect to the angle theta, okay? What do we know about theta here? Well, it really comes down to this identity, the, the, the substitution we did, x equals 3 sine theta. If I divide both sides by 3, I get sine theta is equal to x over 3. And so what we know about theta is we know its sine ratio. The sine of theta will be x over 3. So if we have a right triangle whose interior angle is theta, then uh, we know that the sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, would look like x thirds. So we could take the triangle whose opposite side is x and whose uh, hypotenuse is 3. Well, how do we find the adjacent side of said, uh, of said triangle right here, right? Uh, well, it would really come down to the Pythagorean equation. We know whatever this side is, the adjacent side, if we square it and add it to the opposite side squared, this will equal the hypotenuse squared. Now, solving for the adjacent side, we see that the adjacent side squared would equal the hypotenuse squared, which is 3 squared, minus the opposite side squared, which is an x squared. We see that the adjacent side is none other than the square root of 9 minus x squared. Now, if that looks familiar to you, that means you've been paying attention here, right? Uh, the square root of 9 minus x squared was the indicator that I got this whole trigonometric substitution started in the first place. So it should hopefully come as no surprise that the third side of this triangle is none other than the square root that got this thing activated. And so that's an important thing uh, to notice here. And we're going to see this in future examples as well. As we do these triangle diagrams, the third side will be the square root that made us think we wanted to do a trig substitution in the first place. All right. So with that said, uh, we're in a position where we can start to simplify these things. Well, that is to say, when I say simplify, I mean, let's take the integral um, that's on the top here and start writing in terms of theta instead of x anymore. Well, let's do the easy parts first. There's an x squared on the bottom. x is 3 sine theta. So we're going to get a 9 sine squared in the denominator. Likewise, the dx is part of the integral. Sometimes we leave it off, which is really unfortunate because it's a geometric part of these rectangles. It's the thickness of the rectangle here. Uh, the dx itself is 3 cosine d theta. So we're going to put that in as well. Don't forget the d theta uh, or the dx part. That's probably one of the most common mistakes with these trigonometric substitutions. Now what do we do with this square root of 
9 minus x squared. Well, there's there's two ways we can kind of approach this. One of them is just to take the nine, the square root of 9 minus x squared and replace the x with a 3 sine theta. And you can do that, right? Of course, you'll get the square root of 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. Factor out the 9, you get the square root of 9, the square root of 1 minus sine theta, sine squared theta. Now, using the trigonometric identity, 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. This becomes a 3 cosine. So that is, of course, why this identity is, is being used right here, right? Uh, but on the other hand, we made some statements about the domain I didn't really talk about. The reason we made those statements about the domain is because we're referring to this angle right here. If we restrict the angle theta, we have a genuine triangle. And instead of using identities, you could actually use the geometric intuition of the triangle. Notice, if you take this square root right here, um, this is the adjacent side. If you take the constant side, which is the hypotenuse, what we can say is the square root of 9 minus x squared over 3 is equal to cosine theta. Times both sides by 3, we get that the square root of 9 minus x squared is equal to 3 cosine theta. So something that I often do is when I do a trigonometric substitution, I, I talk about what is x. So what's the substitution there? What's a dx? But I also want to say what is the square root that made me want to do a trig sub in the first place. And so using either this identity approach or using this triangle approach, I'll be using the triangle approach for the most part, uh, we see that the square root of 9 minus x squared is the same thing as 3 cosine theta. And so if we make that substitution into the integral here, we get a 3 cosine theta. And so then we try to make some uh, substitutions here. Some, uh, it's not substitutions, I'm sorry. We try to calculate this integral. Now, some simple uh, simplification, of course. There's 3 times 3 on top. That cancels the 9 on the bottom. We have 2 cosines on the top. We have 2 sines on the bottom. In which case, we then get the integral of cosine squared theta d theta over sine squared. And so what we've done is we've now turned our algebraic integral into a purely trigonometric one. Um, and then how we proceed to compute this antiderivative depends a lot on the nature of the trigonometric integral. There's a couple approaches you could try to take here. You, you, you could probably do a u substitution, maybe integration by parts. Some trig identity will probably be necessary here uh, at some point. Now the approach I'm going to take is the following. Cosine over sine is the same thing as cotangent. So this is actually just a cotangent squared d theta. And so what do you do with a cotangent? Well, cotangent by itself might not be the best one to integrate, but using the identity that 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared, I could rewrite this as cosecant squared theta minus 1 d theta. Now, the reason this identity here is preferable, replacing cotangent squared with cosecant squared minus 1, is that cosecant squared is an sort of obvious um, derivative, that is, Remember that the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So as we break this thing up, we take the integral of cosecant squared theta d theta minus the integral of d theta. Well, here I'm going to take a negative cosecant, so a double negative. And so therefore, the antiderivative of negative cosecant squared is cotangent. So we get a negative cotangent theta. And then the antiderivative of d theta is just theta. So we get a negative theta plus a constant. So this right here, we don't want to get too excited because we just found an antiderivative. So we think we're done. This, of course, is just the start, right? This found the antiderivative in terms of theta. We need to find the antiderivative in terms of x. And so we might have to scroll back up uh, the screen a little bit here. And we see that we could try to play around with this equation right at the top. And I will do that for a second, right? Because if you take this, this equation, this 3 equals 3, uh, th th this x equals 3 sine theta, well, well, we said a moment ago, sine theta equals x over 3. And this also gives us theta equals sine inverse of x over 3. And we're going to make that substitution in down below, particularly right here. Uh, we're going to get as our solution. Uh, we're going to get a negative sine inverse. I guess I don't need to blue to do this in blue. We'll do it in white. Um, if we do sine inverse of x over 3, that takes care of the theta. 
And admittedly, we could just plug that into the cotangent. We could take negative cotangent of sine inverse of x over 3. That would be a correct answer. Now, this one right here, I'm not going to be a big fan of having the inverse trigonometric function inside of the trigonometric function. We could try to simplify that, especially if we come back up to this triangle diagram right here. There's a lot of clutter going on here, so I'm going to clean up some of this just to get it out of the way. Um, of course, what we saw, we know the three sides of this triangle. Uh, we know the adjacent side is the square root of 9 minus x squared. The opposite side is x. The hypotenuse is 3. Well, what can we say about cotangent? Now, if you're not sure, uh, remember cotangent, of course, is going to be uh, the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent we usually remember as opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, sorry, adjacent over opposite. In which case, using uh, this description, that would give us the square root of 9 minus x squared over x. And that's actually what we're going to use for cotangent of the angle. So coming down here, um, instead of taking cotangent of sine inverse of something, uh, we write that as a negative square root of 9 minus x squared over x. And this right here then gives us an antiderivative using the original variable x. We didn't. We no longer using this um, intermediate variable theta that we introduced into it. And so some takeaways from this example right here is that use that code x we saw on the previous slide to help you identify what is the correct trigonometric substitution. Uh, that got us this part right here. This will be given to you by that code x and the square root that's in the problem. Uh, once you have the right substitution, make sure you compute dx. Also figure out how does the square root translate into uh, the trigonometry. I would recommend drawing your right triangle and using that to encode from the language of x to the language of theta. But then at the end of the problem, keep this handy because we can use the triangle to translate back from theta in terms of x, giving us our antiderivative. We're going to have to be able to calculate antiderivatives of trigonometric functions like we saw in the previous section. And so there's a lot going on here, but with enough practice, we can get really good at this very useful technique known as trigonometric substitutions.